Hey, this is Dr. Mitchell, uh, and again, in this video, we're going to use Kenovia software to do angular kinematic analysis. Now, uh, in the previous video, we looked at linear kinematics, and there are some steps here that are going to be very similar to what we saw in the previous video. So I'm going to go through those steps a little bit more quickly. Uh, first, I'm going to go through my options and preferences, uh, make sure that my units are set up correctly. So I'm going to go to my units. I'm okay with that, so I'm going to hit save. And again, I've done this in a previous video, so I'm going a little bit more quickly than I would typically do. I'm going to go to my video uh, tab, configure video timing, and I want to change this to my frame rate. So again, the frame rate for this video was 240 frames per second. Obviously, you'll need to know what your frame rate was when you shot this video. Uh, it just so happened what we shoot at is 240 frames per second, but you might have shot at 60 or 30. Uh, so just make sure you are entering that correctly. We then hit apply. And then we need to set our calibration reference. So I'm going to go to my line marker down at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to follow my, uh, my marker, my ruler here on the wall. Um, follow this up. And I can use the shift key to make sure this line is straight, just like that. And there's my line. I'm going to right click on my line here. Uh, and we're going to leave it orange for, for this. Uh, we're going to go to calibrate, and I need to tell the software what this measurement is. And so this is 70 centimeters. Uh, so I'm going to go to 70, and I'm going to tell it what axis this is. This is the vertical axis, and so I'll put that on there, and I'll hit apply. And so now it knows what the distance is. I'm just going to delete, not delete the mark, the line, but I will delete the display. I don't really need to see the 70 centimeters. It's not important. Uh, now what we need to do is set up an angle. Now this is where we're going to change uh, gears a little bit because for angular kinematics, we're looking at angles. And so we're going to focus on the knee for this. Uh, again, we have various different markers here. We could look at the ankle as well. Uh, it would be the same concept, just you know, different markers we're using. So I'm going to go down to my angle tool. And I'm going to start my angle at the center of this triangle, this angle I'm going to measure. So that's the knee, because I want to look at knee angle. So I'm going to click right on that marker, make sure I'm right in the middle of it. Uh, and then I'm going to scroll or drag this down to my ankle marker on the lateral malleolus. I'm going to drag the other marker to my hip marker. Uh, now, again, I cannot emphasize enough, having good quality markers, good quality video is so incredibly important, especially with angles. Now, because now you have three markers instead of one. So if one marker goes wrong, you, you know, you still have a ton of work to fix. So quality markers is so, so important. Okay, so I got my angle, um, and now what I want to do is right click on here, and I want to configure this. Uh, again, I'm going to make this red just because I like, like to see it nice and bright. I'm going to call this our knee angle, just to give it a name. You don't have to do this, but uh, that, that's, you know, that's your prerogative. Uh, and then I'm going to right click again. Uh, I'm okay with the visibility. Uh, typically, a signed angle is what we use, though I, I, I will tell you, I might change this for for knee angles because a lot of times you get hyperextension in the knee and this gets a little bit weird, uh, but we'll address that here in a few minutes. But So we'll leave sign angle and counterclockwise um, as options. Um, we'll put that there. And then the uh, last thing we want to do is tracking. So this is where we want to start tracking. Again, I'm at the beginning of my video. You want to make sure you're at the beginning. So I'll start tracking and now we're going to play and we're going to hope, 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 hope that this follows us pretty well. So again, I'm going somewhat slow through this video because I, I do want to make sure I'm not uh, missing any errors there. And so uh, this is a little bit slower rate, but again, I just want a good accurate data. So we're just going to start the movement here. The markers look pretty good so far. We haven't lost anything, which is great. No jumping around. Uh, so our sort of jumps. This looks good. That marker's decent. I'm not too unhappy with that. We have landing. The angles stay pretty good. That's not too bad. That's actually not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Um, so we'll let this go till our subject stands straight up. All right, I'm good with that. So we'll pause. We'll pause here. Uh, right click on this. We're going to um, stop tracking. And now we're going to go to our tools. And now with tools, we're going to go to angular kinematics. Uh, now, this is where you may want to adjust some of the angles that you have and how you did this. Uh, so here, this is absolute angle. And because of the way I set up these angles, it's kind of jumping off the screen a little bit. 
Uh, so I actually might go back to this and get rid of the sign angle part. Um, and so when I do that, if I go to Angular Kinematics, uh, this is going to be more, a little more realistic. So uh, the knee is a little unique. Whenever you have an angle that hyperextends like that, you may need to change, get it off of a signed angle. Uh, but uh, other joints where you have less range of motion, like um, uh, like a wrist maybe or something like that, or a neck, uh, the signed angle is definitely a better choice. Uh, so again, here, this is our change in angle during the movement. Uh, and this looks about what I'd expect. Uh, and now, again, here's where you have a lot of options of data that you may want to look at. Uh, maybe I'm interested in angular velocity. Right, and what that looks like during this various uh, aspects of the movement. And again, I can click on any point and get a precise data value for what that is. So here, peak angular velocity is uh, 1,617.05 degrees per second. Right? Uh, so that's, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, maybe I want to look at angular acceleration. You're going to get some really high values there because obviously we're doing degrees um, per second squared. So a different value there. Uh, maybe I want uh, centripetal acceleration. Uh, that's a little more reasonable value. Uh, and again, that's going to depend on the joint you're doing, the analysis you want to do. And that's a little bit up to you as far as what the data is you want. Uh, if total displacement, you want that uh, in degrees, that's, that's not a bad option. This, this is a good value for range of motion. If you want a precise value, it's going to assume that your starting measure is zero degrees. Now, obviously, that's probably not the case. Uh, and obviously, for our subject, it wasn't. You know, it was really 180. Uh, but, you know, maybe there's a value in knowing the difference between your start point and another point. And so, in that case, total displacement is a good, good option. Uh, so, again, we have a lot of options here that we can do. And uh, we can also, again, save this data. And so, we can go to uh, save the file as far as the data goes. This will save it as a CSV file. I'll talk about that in our previous video. And the benefit of that is a lot of other types of software, Excel, MATLAB, other um, statistical packages can use that and uh, that data, uh, read it very easily, and then do whatever analysis is that you want with it. So there's definite definite value here. And so again, you know, I can I, I, I'm going to get out of this graph here. Uh, I can do this for any angle. I could have done the ankle if I wanted to. You know, uh, if, I, if I wanted to do. Um, I had some other markers, I could do that as well. A and lastly, I cannot emphasize enough, and I've said this previously, quality markers. Um, you know, if you have a situation where this marker doesn't track well, and, and this does happen, um, it just so happens for these kind of jumps, uh, we do what's called a counter movement jump, so the individual's hand stays on their hip. But in a normal jump, this hand would be closer down to the side, and this hand would probably get in the way of this marker for a few frames. So you would need to go back. And this is why I said good quality video is so important. You then, if, the, if that was the case, you would need to go back through your video. And I'm just going to scrub backwards here. You know, let's say with this frame right here, this hand got in the way of the tracker. Well, you would need to go in and move that tracker on your own. Frame by frame by frame by frame. To get accurate data. Uh, and that gets tedious, obviously. If you're shooting at 240 frames per second, you're looking at a lot of frames, but you know that's that's part of what we do in the analysis. Now, you can get pretty good at that and move those frames pretty quickly. Uh, move those dots, you can in a few minutes you can kind of correct that. But that may be something you need to do if you have bad markers or if you have a hand or something get in the way. When we do a gate analysis, uh, you know, typically we have an arm that's that's kind of moving. Right and getting in the way of markers during the regular gate cycle, and so you're going to have a handful of frames, usually about you know a dozen to 25, 30 frames, where an arm, a hand, uh, even some clothing might move a little bit. So you may need to manually move these markers to keep your uh, points clear and so to keep your data accurate. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing when you're doing this analysis. Okay, uh, I hope that helped and we will see you in the next video.